Hello and welcome to ATP Report. Thanks for joining us today. Katie Hopkins, my broadcast partner, has flown from the United Kingdom all the way to Washington, D.C. She's on the ground with us today with some really special inside info. Welcome, Katie. Yeah, thank you, Barry. It was a real privilege to be inside the offices of uh, Congressman Gomert and Congressman uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. And uh, so the information we have here is exclusive to ATP. Just watch your language, young lady. You said Congressman instead of person, but we'll, <laughs> we'll let it go today. Uh, a, a man and a woman. Uh. <laughs> That was last week's show, and it's just as stupid today as it was last Friday. I'm sorry. For sure. Uh, so Louis Gohmert uh, is a, a Republican conservative from Texas that pushed hard to object to the certification of the Electoral College. Given all that's happened, the fight over the certification, the MAGA rally with half a million or more people on the mall, the I guess you'd call it the terrorists who got into the Capitol building, some peacefully and some making a big mess. What's Louis' take on this? You know, walking into his offices, uh, it, it's, he is such a powerhouse as we know, but outside the door of his office are two people, one with a camera, one with a notebook. So that's a TV crew waiting for him. You go inside his office where his staff are simply, they're just the most delightful people. They've been with Louis forever, which is always a sign of true greatness. I think you go into Louis's room and he's already doing a radio interview. He's got another one coming. You know, it, he is, and this is a guy that hasn't been to bed for more than two hours. He had two hours sleep because of all the delays when they were doing the voting. Uh, so he's had no sleep. He's powering through, he's got crews outside. He is this kind of dynamo for our side. And I think um, one of the things he feels strangely, despite everything he's doing, is he feels guilt that he couldn't have done more, that he couldn't have changed everything. He, he has almost that kind of survivor's guilt where he feels he could have made it okay. And we saw that with every last thing he tried. Um, but he said to me, you know, this would have been different if someone had just heard the case of fraud but no one would hear it. And to me, that's probably the most, you know, that's the most stark and, and meaningful thing I've heard for a long time. It wasn't that court case after court case after court case was dismissed. Yeah, sure. But they never even were heard. And would all of those people, I'm not defending the terrorists that broke in, nothing, but would those people feel the way they felt if they'd had their chance to be heard? And that's really Louis, you know, his fundamental point. But watching him then get straight on the radio and make that point that, you know, 200,000 votes found in Pennsylvania, he's not giving up. Even after all seems lost, he's still fighting and he's going to go home and carry on that fight. And, you know, if any time we need to hold on to leaders like Louis, it's now. He, he is not and will not give up, despite all the things that are thrown at him. He was acute. While I was in his office, the radio station accused him of inciting violence. And not only is that disrespectful to the office of the congressman, it's so disrespectful to one of the true gentlemen of our time. Let me ask you a question. This is annoying the crap out of me, and I, I can't figure out the answer, although I think I do know what the answer is. City after city in, in the US was attacked and destroyed in large part or in significant parts uh, all summer long, uh, ostensibly under the banner of Black Lives Mattering. And Black businesses were burned to the ground and Blacks were killed by Blacks and whites and police stations were destroyed and billions and billions and billions of dollars in property damage. The capital is already back to normal. It looks like it used to look, uh, it's already been cleaned up. And yet this seems to be the end of the world and nobody talks about city after city after city, business after business, all destroyed people's lives ruined and it barely got in the press. 
Why, Katie? It is so stark that, Barry, the double standards on all of this. You know, I was in Minneapolis not that long ago. I stood outside the police precinct that they burned to the ground and chased police out of there who ran for their lives. The cup store that they burnt down and looted where people, poor people need to go to get their stuff and they can't anymore. And the pharmacy they burnt down. You know, and then of course you've got clips, haven't you, of leaders? Do you remember the clip where, who's the leader from California? She was standing there, the crazy lady, and she was standing there saying, you hunt down Trump's cabinet. And if you see them dining or you see them in a restaurant, you hunt them down and you make their lives as hard as you can. That's it's Matt, this, Matt. Oh, that's it, exactly, Maxine, thank you. It's the duplicity of that, the hypocrisy. Here, when there were 600,000, 500,000, whatever, peaceful protesters, we don't get the benefit of that. We don't no, get the benefit no. of largely peaceful. Well, let me just tell you, in the US, I searched for pictures on any channel, and I include Fox News, nobody would show it. And when I did see the pictures taken by people I know, some who are my friends, there were hundreds of thousands of people miles long Husbands, wives, kids, grandparents, all marching with their red hats, all because they cared about the country. And nothing was being attacked and no one was being hurt and everyone was loving everyone. And then all hell broke loose. The story is it's just so about true. all hell breaking loose. But exactly right. And at a personal level, so the curfew came in, I was still out because I was trying to capture the last moments and speak to people. I went back to the hotel in, it's a dodgy little hotel where I am in Chinatown, because uh, I like to be amongst our own. And there was all these Trump supporters just outside because they're not allowed to go anywhere, no bars are open. They couldn't have been more delightful to me. One of them held the, no one knows who the hell I am. I'm just some ratty old woman that got out of an Uber. One of them held the door for me to get out the car. One of them held the door for the hotel. You know, they're just just the most, they, it's like having a beautiful family and everywhere you go with them, they're just darling people. And that was true even after all the craziness and all the things that are being accused of them and the police coming in a bit heavy handed, still behaving in that lovely way where all talk to each other the next morning on the pavement, on the sidewalk, sorry, all talking to each other. You know, that's our side. And, and no matter what we're being told, we have to remember the truth of our side. I think it's really important. When, I couldn't agree with you more. Now you happen to go spend some time with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah. Um, what's your takeaway from this feisty Georgia Ooh. Congresswoman? Yeah, and you know, that is an amazing side of Marjorie, this, you know, pocket rocket, Trump in heels, gun toting, you know, bring it on grass. She's one of grass, she's more blooming grassroots than the grass. Uh, but, you know, when you sit and talk quietly with someone and you're, they know that you're, you know, I really feel for her because it's lonely. We know, you know, uh, we all know, Annie knows, um, it's lonely. And, and she very quickly spoke to that. It's her third day in office. She made a stand to say, no, I, you know, I reject this vote count. And, and she knows they're coming for her. She's been told repeatedly, they're coming for you. Uh, they want to either get her on the mask, they want to get her on insurrection. She believes they could manage to get her thrown out. She hasn't even unpacked her office yet. You know, we're sat surrounded by boxes and God knows what, she's not even got her foot over the door and it's not even that she's not being made welcome, she's being made to feel that her time there is very going to be very short, they're going to make it as painful as possible, and she just had a, as, as she came to me from the canteen, she just had a nasty experience uh, being shouted at in the, in the canteen of the kind of Congress people. So, you know, my heart just, every bird of part of me just wanted to pick her up, cuddle her in and then and then you know how we are we want to be next to her to, to to go and take down some of the people that are attacking her and I think that's actually something our side is going to need to do is to help look after and support and show affection and care for the valiant few that had the moral courage to make a stand 
Thanks, Katie. Thank you for so much uh, of what you do, especially coming here to our country to report on the news that is embarrassing, it's humiliating, and for many people, it's devastating. We really, really appreciate your effort. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate I'm a foreigner. I know I'm an outsider, but I love your country. I love the great people in it and the very best Americans were here in the capital. And I can assure you they absolutely did the right thing. Thank you for joining us today on ATP Report with Katie and Barry. I wanna thank you for both of us and remind you to please subscribe to our text message system so you'll get this and all of our shows on your cell phone for free. It's very easy. Send the word truth to 88202. The number at the bottom is 88202, push send, and you'll be subscribed for free. You'll get all of our stuff, including the first few chapters of my new book, because you asked, you'll get it for free, no charge, just as a thank you for subscribing. You can also sign up at our website, americantruthproject.org, put in your name, and we'll send everything to you for free, just the same. For Barry and for Katie, thanks for joining us on ATP Report.